Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, man, we're so excited to be with you guys again, wherever you're watching, uh, your living room, your bedroom, the bathroom, whatever. Whatever you're doing, we're pumped that we get to hang out again. A um, couple announcements before we jump in. Uh, number one, uh, I still need ideas of places to go film. So if you guys have any ideas, it could be something like your front yard or your garage or the bed of your mom's truck. I don't care. Just pick a place for me to go to, for us to go to, um, so we can get out of the office a little bit. Um, and then another two announcements. Don't forget, we're doing our daily Zoom meetings. We're reading Proverbs uh, one chapter a day, every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. If you've been joining us, you know it's been awesome. And if you haven't been able to make it and you need the Zoom link, holler at us, drop a comment in the, in the section below, or shoot me a text or DM us and we'll get you hooked up with that. Also, make sure you're responding and talking with your group leaders. Uh, man, small groups are so important right now for us to stay connected during this whole stay at home thing. So please, please, please reach out to your group leader and figure out when you guys are gonna be doing small groups and talking about the lessons. Um, well, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into week two of our current series titled Love and Hate. So have you guys ever been saved by a heads up from somebody? Now, like it may be something that's awkward to say, but it somehow ends up saving you from embarrassment. Like think about it. Your buddy maybe told you, hey man, you got food in your teeth or uh, your fly is down or you got ketchup on your chin or the person you're talking about is like right behind you. Um, you know, we've all been there and though it's a little bit embarrassing to have these conversations at that point, it ends up saving that person from embarrassment, from walking around with food in their teeth or maybe with a piece of toilet paper hanging out the back of their foot after they went to the bathroom, things like that is kind of what I'm talking about. Have you guys ever been in that situation where somebody saves you from that? You know, we hate it at the moment, but we're grateful about it once it happens because it saves us from embarrassment. Now, let's flip the script though. Have you ever been in a position where you have to tell someone something or warn them, but you don't know how to go about it? You know, like telling people that they got food stuck in their teeth, you know, or, or a piece of paper stuck on their heel, that's not a massive deal. But what about those harder conversations, like telling them about your not so healthy relationship that you have? or that they have, or telling them about the decisions that they're making and about how they may not be great, or maybe speaking to them about something that you know is going to get them in trouble and trying to get them to stop. Those conversations probably feel a lot different than the other conversations because these are hard. You know, think of your sibling or your best friend started hanging out with the wrong crew or the wrong crowd and started making all these decisions that weren't them how would you have that conversation with them to tell them that what they're doing isn't right? You know, and you may even wonder, I've done some of those things before. What makes me uh, allowed to have that conversation? Wouldn't it be hypocritical of me to have that conversation with them? So usually we try and avoid these conversations. And why do we do that? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Maybe it's because you don't want to ruin a friendship or we may not, we may have done whatever it is that they're doing and we feel like hypocrites calling them out. Um, the other person maybe won't listen to us. Uh, we don't know how to even bring up the conversation or how to even say it. Or maybe you're on the other end of the scenario and you have no problem calling people out. You are the type of person that speaks their mind and doesn't ever hold back and you love telling people how you feel about them and about the situations that they're in. And sometimes the problem with that is, is that sometimes when we speak that way, we are not always listen to. And here's what I mean by that. It's sometimes the way we present things, if it's aggressive or judgmental, um, people tend to not listen to that. And if you wrestle with this, there is some hope. You, you know, you're not alone. We've all been there, just like we talked about this issue of the love and hate thing last week. You know, carrying into this week, this isn't just an issue with your generation. This is an issue with my generation and the generations before me. Adults, older people, uh, teenagers, whatever age of life you're in, the idea of, of balancing love and hate, is, it still exists. So how do we have these hard conversations? There's an easy way and a helpful way that we can do this and we can look at the Bible for this and it can bring something positive up. Because no one wants to be known as a hater. No one wants to be known as a self-righteous person that just beats people down over the head because they know better or they claim to know better. Instead, we want a reputation of love. So how do we do that? 
let's dive in. So last time we were here, we talked about how we should all be about love. And, and who wouldn't want to be known for loving other people? You know, no matter how trendy it could be to be a hater or how cool it makes us look, we know that it's better to be known for loving others. So if love is the goal, how do we handle those conversations whenever somebody's doing something wrong and we want to correct them or give them some advice so that they stop? We sometimes think that we need to do what we need to do is avoid them and avoid those conversations. The world pushes us to say that everything's okay and that everybody just does their own thing and that everybody's different and we need to let people be different and, and choose their own path. But I think we all know that that isn't the case and it's especially when it comes to people that we love and that are close enough to us. We don't want to see them get hurt. We don't want to see them make the wrong choices. And Paul talks about this too. He wrote a letter to a church in Galatia, and which is modern-day Turkey, and he says this in the letter. Galatians 6.1 says, Dear brothers and sisters, if, anyone, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. He's saying here that if anyone believes the same, the same thing as us, falls off the right path, our responsibility is to help them get back on it. Now catch one thing there. He's saying that people that believe the same as us, meaning we can't judge people the same way as we judge ourselves as Christians if they're not believers. We can't have these expectations for people that don't share the same faith and the same um the same ideas and, and, and commandments that we choose to follow as Christians. So that's number one. We, and then the other thing is our responsibility is to help them get on the right path. In other words, he's saying that it doesn't stop with a conversation. We also need to help them get on the right track. We need to do something. Now, here's what Paul isn't saying. He isn't saying that you're personally responsible for your friend's decision making. And he isn't saying that we need to put ourselves in a position that could ultimately lead us to stumbling. Wisdom in these conversations and in these situations is imperative. It's one of the most important times where we need wisdom. The point Paul is making is that with humility and gentleness, you and I can help people that are struggling get back on the right path. And he continues. In Galatians 6.2, he says, Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. This is how we help each other. We share each other's burdens. Let me paint you a picture. Um, in the world of fitness, there is a person that is called a spotter. So what a spotter does is they are there for you whenever you are lifting your heaviest weights or going for a personal record. They are there to make sure you're safe and they're standing behind you. And the moment you start failing or the weight is, is starting to come back against you and crush you, the role, the job of that spotter is to grab that barbell and help you lift it. In, in a sense, they are taking that burden that you are holding onto yourself and they're taking that burden and holding it for you or, or helping you move that burden. That is what we're supposed to do with other people. To help them get on the straight and narrow, we're supposed to help by taking their burdens upon us. Now, Paul cared so deeply about the people in Galatia, and that's why he writes this letter. He did it in the most loving way that he could do it, but it wasn't the easiest, and we owe it to each other to speak up. Now, truth is, we do need each other, not just to point when we're off the right path, but also to carry these burdens alongside. And we have to do more than just talk. We need to be able to be the spotters for our friends and our loved ones all around us. We don't just point fingers and talk. We take burdens. For those of us that think we have no problem calling somebody out and telling them exactly what they're doing wrong, Paul did put two words in this verse that I want you guys to take heart of. Gentle and humble. Meaning that what we say, it's just as important as how we say it. Being kind, helpful, and encouraging shows people that we're helping out of love. Now, hard conversations are not going to be easy. And by avoiding them, that isn't us showing other people love. Also, enjoying them and enjoying making somebody feel bad and small, that's not loving either. Now, it's fine. It's a fine line to walk when we do this, and that's why wisdom is so important. Ask yourself this. Am I showing love and treating this person how I'd want to be treated? 
You know, love is going to push us to talk about difficult things uh, in a compassionate way. You know, we carry the burden for others because we care about that person, not because we care about only us and our image. So what does this look like? How do we put this into practice in our daily in our daily uh, days and with the people we're with? You know, for some of us, it may be thinking of that friend we need to have a conversation with. This may be super close friend, you go to school with them, or you maybe hang out with them all the time, or you, I guess you don't go to school with them right now, but maybe you text with them all the time, or you FaceTime with them, or are Snapchatting with them. That person that's closest to you, maybe it means you have to have a conversation with that person. And if we're supposed to be about love for one another, then when we have to be, when we have to have these conversations, we need to let love be the filter that we get these conversations through. And, and you guys know how filter works. You know, you, you have filters on Snapchat, you have filters on Instagram, and basically what these filters do is they take whatever picture you're looking at and they make it better, or they change it in a sort of way that isn't how the picture used to be in the first place. That is the same way that love works when we use it as a filter. It takes whatever we're wanting to say or we're wanting to communicate and it changes it and it makes it better. It makes it a way that is easily acceptable by people. When we help somebody make a different choice that they've been making, we do it even if it makes us feel awkward. And when we encourage them to make a change in their behavior, we have to do it from a place of love. Then when we see them make a step in the right direction, man, we celebrate that. We get excited about that when somebody overcomes whatever their burdens are and starts heading in their direction back to God. So how does this filter apply? Here's some ideas. Number one, let love be the filter for your environment. When you're wondering if you should be, if you should be getting involved in a friend's issue, ask yourself this question, what's the most loving thing you can do? Use this question to help decide if you need to take the next step. The next step is let love be the filter to your words. Ask yourself, how would I like someone to have this conversation with me? How would I like to hear this conversation? Because when we filter our words through love, we will make sure that we don't, we don't just throw shade at somebody when we're calling them out, but we're doing it from a loving place. And it isn't about making them look bad and having yourself look good. It's about helping them carry their burdens. Your words can spark hope in somebody or they can feel judgmental. And once you've filtered your words, then you can move on to the next step, which is let love be the filter for your actions and your reactions. If we have friends that are having, that are having their lives headed in the wrong direction, chances are they don't just need your words. Chances are they actually need you to come alongside of them and help them. Put yourself in their shoes. Wouldn't you want a friend that is always by their phone ready to pick up whenever you're struggling with something? Wouldn't you want a friend that you could call when you maybe end up um, at a place you're not supposed to be? Maybe you end up at a party that you didn't think was going to be bad and it turns out bad. Wouldn't you want a friend that you can call or text to come pick you up at that time? That is the type of person that we should strive to be, the person that is there supporting and carrying the burdens for others. When we let love be our filter, we wind up sharing in these burdens. So imagine your life at school or at home or at work if everyone filtered their actions and their words and their involvement through that filter of love. We would say things out of love, not out of judgment. We, would, we could keep each other from doing silly things and regretting them later. And a filter of love could easily change the direction of somebody's life forever. So let's be people that let love be our filter to help people stay in the right direction. Guys, we love you. We miss you so much. I know I say this every week. I can't wait for this whole craziness to be over. Um, also, this following week, be on the lookout for a surprise one of these days on your doorstep. Um, just keep checking here and there. Uh, we have something coming for you guys. Again, can't wait to see you guys next week. See ya.